In this video we're going to talk about subtracting mixed numbers. And again, there are two ways to go about this. You can either choose to convert the mixed numbers to fractions, subtract the fractions, and then convert back. Or you can keep them into a, in a mixed number form and then subtract the mixed numbers. Now, the first way uses fractions. And so if you're if you're not very comfortable with fractions as far as adding and subtracting them and what you need to do, you have to go back and review that. And, and you're going to need to know that cold. Now, coming into this, you're going to have to know that as well, but it's going to be a little bit easier because the numbers will be smaller. You're still going to have to know how to add and subtract fractions, though. So, first step in subtracting mixed numerals, and I'm going to keep them as mixed numbers. I'm going to, I'm going to do the, the borrowing. All right? So, the first things first, we want to ensure that the fractions in each mixed number have a common denominator. If they don't, we have to get one. So step two, if the top number's fraction is larger than the bottom, go ahead and subtract them, and that's fine. If, however, it's not, we have to do something different. All right, let's go ahead and walk through these steps with each of these examples down here. And I'll probably have to scroll down just a little bit. But in this first example, we ensure that the fractions have a common denominator, and they do. They both have eights. It says number two, if the top number's fraction is larger than the bottom, and once they have common denominators, then you can check that. Subtract the two fractions, continue to step four. Okay. Now, three, and now three is bigger than one, so we'll go ahead and subtract them. Three minus one gives us two eights. And I actually want to put that in a different spot. I kind of want to put it out here, just because if I, if I look, 2 eighths can be reduced to 1 fourth. So I'm going to take that 1 fourth and I slap that right back down there. Now, if we can do that, we skip to step 4. Skip step 3. Don't, don't bother looking at it yet. If you haven't done it, place the answer from either step three or step 2 or step 3 in the, uh, in the answer. And we did that. We put our answer 1 quarter down in the answer spot. Step five, subtract the integers and place the result as the integer in the answer. Two minus one is one, and there's our answer. And so see, that's not bad. Okay, now it starts to get a little tricky though. So we gotta pay very close attention to this. We wanna make sure that we borrow correctly. In the case of 23, it's 23 and 0 sixths. Okay, ensure that the fractions have common denominators, and they do. If the top number's fraction is larger than the bottom, then it's not, is it? I got 0 and 1. Uh, that's not working, so I have to move to step 3. If the bottom fraction is larger, borrow 1, 1 from the top integer, and to add that to the fraction part. Here's what I mean by 1. When we were doing normal subtraction, we would borrow 1 from the next column, and we would get a 10. We'd just throw a 1 in front of it, and we'd be done. That's not how it works in mixed numbers. When you borrow 1, the next column is the 1's column. That means I'm not borrowing 10 fourths. I'm borrowing 4 fourths. That's what I have to add in. That's what I mean by be very, very careful of the borrowing. And so on this, on coming back to our problem, I want to borrow. That means that when I borrow, I'm going to borrow one from the integers, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, add that on as six sixths. The reason for that is I've already got common denominators, so. I want to keep those denominators in common. In order to add this in, they have the denominators have to be in common. And 1 can be written as any number divided by itself. We borrowed 1. Okay, so now that means that we're going to have 6 sixths on top. All right, so now we can go ahead and subtract the two fractions. So 6 sixths to minus 1 sixth gives us 5 sixths. And 
If you haven't already done it, place the answer from two or three in the answer, and we did. Uh, step number five, subtract the integers. 22 minus 7 is 15. Okay, now, the trickiest part is borrowing. You must borrow correctly. Concentrate on doing that. Concentrate on borrowing only one, and then adding it as the fraction that you have once you've gotten a common denominator, and adding that number over itself, because that way it'll be one.